remember to start recording. Um, and uh, who shall we have first? John White, would you like to open the session? Are you ready? Yeah, I assume. Sorry, my uh, yeah. Sorry, John. I had you. You were still on mute. I've unmuted you now. John's the only person I unmute. Okay, yeah. don't don't get used to it, everyone. <laughs> if everyone knows what my 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 eyes are not what they were, so I can't read the three very well. Anyway, um, this is a song that you all re recall. Uh, Steel Eye Span did uh, several many years ago. Uh, all around my head, I wear a green willow. Uh, but it was a very strange version they did because it's a sad song of a, a separation and parting uh, and they did a very noisy, lively, rocked up version. So uh, this one is one that Ch Charles Chilton uh, collected and I think it brings out the, uh, the, the original pathos uh, of, the, of the song. Mm -hmm. And also it's got, it is the original verses uh, in the, the Steel Eye version, they, they nicked a, a verses from another song. Anyway, here we go. Twas going of me rounds in the streets, I didn't meet her. I thought she was an angel, just come down from the sky. And I never heard a voice more pretty, more, more sweeter when she cried by my primroses, primroses come by. So all round me hat, I wears a green willow. All round me hat, for a twelve-month thunder day. And if anyone should ask you the reason why I wears it, I wears it for me true love, who's far, far away. Oh, my love, she was fair, and my love, she was kind too. But cruel was the judge who my dear love did try, for thieving was a thing that she never had a mind to. But he sent her out across the seas, across to Botany Bay. So all round me at, I will wear a green willow, all round me at, for a twelve month thunder day. And if anyone should ask you, the reason why I wears it, I wears it for my true love, who's far, far away. For seven long years, my love and I are parted. For seven long years, my love is bound to stay. But when she comes back, I oh, will never more be parted. We'll marry and be happy forever and a day. So all round my hat, I wears a green willow. All round me hat, for a twelfth month and a day. And if anyone should ask me the reason why I wears it, I wears it for my true love, who's far, far away. Yay. Yeah, well done, John. Well done, there, John. Yay. Lovely. What a man. <laughs> Lovely rendition, John. Thank you. Bye. Our next singer is Dave Harbord, followed by Moira, unless you're doing something together. No. <laughs> and af after Moira, <laughs> we're going to have Caroline. So um, get ready, yeah. Caroline. Okay. Have you, you. have you muted them all yet? No, I'm just about to. Now I have. Right, I'm unmuted. Now, um, I, I, so I think I'd better explain this song a little bit. Um, in During the Second World War, the, the Eighth Army uh, defeated the Germans in Africa and then they headed over to Italy and they went up Italy and there was some of the fiercest fighting of the Second World War. Meantime, at home in, in, in Britain, they were preparing for the D-Day landings. And uh, the first lady MP, called Lady Astor, uh, accused them of trying to avoid 
fighting on P Day. So anyway, this song was written by Hamish Imlach, who was in the Eighth Army in, himself, and he obviously wasn't very happy over what she said. So here we go. <clears throat> we are the D-Day Dodgers out in Italy, always on the vino and always on the spree. Eighth Army scroungers and their tanks, we live in Rome among the Yanks. We are the D-Day Dodgers in sunny Italy. We landed at Salerno, a holiday with pay. The Jerry brought the bands out to greet us on our way. They showed us the sights, they gave us tea. We all sang songs, the beer was free. We are the D-Day Dodgers out in Italy. Naples and our casino were taken in our stride. We didn't go to fight there, we went just for the ride. Anzio and Sangro were just names. We only went to look for dames. We are the D-Day Dodgers out in Italy. Dear Lady Asta, you think you're mighty hot? Standing on the platform and talking Tommy Rot. You're England's sweetheart and a pride. We think your mouth to bleed in wide. We are the D-Day Dodgers in sunny Italy. Look along the mountains, down across the plain, there lie the scattered crosses of them who will remain. Heartaches and pain and suffering gone, they are the ones who linger on. They are the D-Day Dodgers who stay in Italy. They are the D-Day Dodgers who stay in Italy. Henderson, not the, uh, Henderson, not I in last. I'm saying that I had the wrong Hamish. Mm. Hamish, Hamish Henderson. Henderson. But when I looked at the words, it said Hamish Imlach. So. <laughs> Maybe he's saying it. Yeah. Also, for correction, the first woman MP was uh, Catherine Markovich. She was uh, Irish <laughs> to take up her seat. <laughs> Apart from that, everyone. She was Sinn Fein, wasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we have Moira ready to go? We do. Okay. everyone. Bring yourself back. Okay. Um, well, um, I've got this, this is the first time I've sung this one. It's a Dublin song which is where I come from. And I, when I grew up, I, um, I used to meet the dealers all the time. I used to sell fruit and vegetables. And then part of the time they'd be selling clothes. And I went to school very close to the Dublin markets. And a lot of the children um, came from those families. So it means quite a lot to me, and I remember all the things. Now, I've, I'm going to make an attempt to try and sound Dublin again, having been here for uh, 50 years. So I apologise if I don't do it very well. Uh, Biddy Mulligan, the pride of the Coombe. You may travel from Clare to the county Kildare, from Francis Street back to the Coombe. Ah, but where would you see a fine widow like me? Biddy Mulligan, the pride of the Coombe, me boys. Biddy Mulligan, the pride of the Coombe. I'm a buxom fine widow, I live in a spot. 
in Dublin, they call it the coom. And me shops and me stalls are laid out on the street, and me palace consists of one room. I sell apples and oranges, nuts and spit peas, bananas and sugar stick sweet. On a Saturday night, I sell second-hand clothes from the floor of me stall in the street. Oh, you travel from Clare to the county Kildare, from Francis Street back to the Coombe. Ah, but where would you see a fine widow like me? Biddy Mulligan, the pride of the Coombe. Me boys, Biddy Mulligan, the pride of the Coombe. I sell fish on a Friday, spread out on a board, the finest you'll find in the sea. Ah, but the best of me hens, Find Dublin Bain herons, there's herons for dinner and tea. I have a son, Mac, and he plays on the flute. He plays in the Longford Street Band. I would do your hat good for to see him march out on a Sunday for Dolly Mount Strand. You may travel from Clare to the county Kildare, from Francis Street back to the Coombe. Ah, but where would you see a fine widow like me? Biddy Mulligan, the pride of the Coombe. Me boys, Biddy Mulligan, the pride of the Coombe. In a park on a Sunday, I make twice a dash. The neighbours look on in surprise. In me, at with me, Aberdeen, surely you thrown over me head. I dazzle the sight of their eyes. At Patrick Street corner for 64 years, I've stood and no one can deny. That while I stood there, nobody would dare to say black was the white of me eye. You may travel from Clare to the county Kildare, from Francis Street back to the Coombe. Ah, but where would you see a fine widow like me? Biddy Mulligan, the pride of the Coombe, me boys. Billy Mulligan, the pride of the Coo. <laughs> Great stuff, Moira. Thank you. Now, um, a, a celebrity has joined us. Ooh, um, which one? <laughs> They're all celebrities. Because Caroline, <laughs> our next singer, is not just Caroline Stupniska anymore. She is a winner of the Islington Folk Club ah, Trance. Yes, that's great. Thank you. Well done, Caroline. Look forward Thank to you. hearing you in a second. After Caroline, um, is Chris also singing? If that's if possible, yes, but yeah, one of okay, well, well, then we'll have Chris, Chris after you then. Great, thank you. Hello. Okay. Um, I've just been learning the song recently, so it goes like this. As I was a walking up a fair London street, a recruiting party I chanced for to meet. They enlisted me and treated me until I did not know. And to the Queen's barracks they forced me to go. When first I deserted, I thought myself free, until my cruel companions informed against me. I was quickly followed after and brought back with speed. 
I was handcuffed, I was guarded, heavy irons on me. Court martial, court martial was held against me, and the sentence upon me was three hundred and three. May the Lord have mercy on them for their sad cruelty. For you see, the Queen's duty now lies heavy on me. The next time I deserted, I thought myself free. Unto my cruel sweetheart informed against me. I was quickly followed after and brought back with speed. I was handcuffed, I was guarded, heavy irons on me. Court martial, court martial was very soon got and the sentence passed on me that I had to be shot. May the Lord have mercy on them for their sad cruelty. For you see the Queen's duty now lies heavy on me. Now it's down comes Prince Albert in his carriage and six, saying, bring me that young man whose coffin is fixed. Release him from his iron and set him go free, for he will make a good soldier for his queen and country. Thanks very much, Caroline. Have they given you the money yet? Uh, <laughs> not last time I looked, but... <laughs> okay, over to you, Chris. After Chris, could we have Steve Suffolk? I finally learned to pronounce name so yes. there's been some progress <laughs> well, yes another war song from me but i've been thinking about it lately because unlike most war songs like uh, dave's which are about the experience of fighting the war this is about being back home and all the men aren't there and society is dead nothing happens it's like it's like life's ended or suspended so i think it's a very good quarantine song as well as a good war song. It goes like this. Daytime is weary and I called dusk dreary when lasses in missiles are raking the hay. When Kai come for stripping and yells come for clipping, we think on our soldiers now gone right away. The cotton gates idle, no lad flings his bridle. Over the yoke stoop and come seeking May was hard, but we misses our lads' softest kisses, the flowers of the forest are gone right away. At Martin Mass hiring, no ribbons, no tirings, where God's 
pennies earned and the time comes for clay. No cheap jacks, no prancing with teams the clogs dancing. The flowers of the forest are gone right away. Plow lads from panel have crossed o'er the channel. Shepherds from Houston have taken king's pay. Thackrays from Dacre have sold every acre. You'll no find a delver from Havre to Bray. Many a lass now is weeping for a man that lies sleeping. No wrap for his corpse, but the cold Flanders clay. He'll ne'er lift his limbs, he'll ne'er wean his gimmers. The flowers of the forest are gone right away. You're offended. Bye. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> now I have Steve, um, and we're having a brief North American section. So, uh, Reggie is going to follow Steve, please. Oh. Over to you, Steve. <clears throat> Okay, I just unmuted myself, so that should be good. I might have done this song before on this session. I don't know. I know I've sung it at Chops, but I'm going to sing it anyway. On January 2nd, 2006, 13 men went to work in a coal mine in Sago, West Virginia. There was an explosion and a partial cave-in, and... Two days later, when the rescue team finally got to them, only one of them was still alive. The other 12 had perished, not from the cave-in and not from the, uh, the explosion per se, but asphyxiated mm -hmm. from what was called fire damp, a mixture of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, methane, water vapor, coal dust that seeped into the mine. This is their story. There is a refrain, and you're welcome to sing along, although I won't be able to hear you. Can you hear that steam whistle blow? Can you hear that steam whistle blow? It's shrieking and it's crying, says there's trouble at the mine. Can you hear that steam whistle blow? Try it with me. Can you hear that steam whistle blow? Can you hear that steam whistle blow? It's shrieking and it's crying, says there's trouble at the mine. Can you hear that steam whistle blow? Can you hear that little girl pray? Can you hear that little girl pray? Can you hear that little girl pray? Bring my daddy home today. Can you hear that steam whistle blow? Can you hear the mine rescue team? Can you hear the mine rescue team? Can you hear the rescue team listening for the miners scream? Can you hear that steam whistle blow? Can you hear the trap miners choke? 
Can you hear the trapped miners choke? Can you hear the miners choke on the fire damp and smoke? Can you hear that steam whistle blow? Can you hear the mine widows moan? Can you hear the mine widows moan? Can you hear the widows moan? Gonna chill you to the bone. Can you hear that steam whistle blow? Can you hear the mine owners lie? Can you hear the mine owners lie? Can you hear the owners lie while another 12 men die? Can you hear that steam whistle blow? First verse once again and we'll go out. Can you hear that steam whistle blow? Can you hear that steam whistle blow? It's shrieking and it's crying, says there's trouble at the mine. Can you hear that steam whistle blow? We are still hoping to get, sorry, we're still hoping to get there this fall, but I doubt that we'll actually make it. We still have our reservations for September 27th. British Airways hasn't canceled, and if we cancel, then yeah. we don't get the cash refund. So maybe we'll see you in 2021 or 2020. Uh, Steve, Steve, my experience this, this spring, when I was meant to be going to the States, was that you couldn't claim a refund until three days before your flight was due to leave. I did get one eventually. Very, very good. Because I looked at it now, they said I could get a voucher, but not a cash refund. Yeah. Thank you. Got the, the, I mean, well, I don't know about U.S. law, but I just thought it would be the same. They're legally obliged here to give you a refund eventually. Thank you. Absolutely nothing. As long as they don't go out of business, of course. Okay, still in North America then, we have Riggy, the other coast. Um, and after Riggy, Gary Walker, could you play, please take the floor as much as it is? Okay, Bobby Charles. If I had my way, I'd leave here today. I'd leave in a hurry. Find me a place where I could stay and not have to worry. A place I'd feel loose. A place I could lose East Tennessee blue Find me a spot On some mountain top With no one around me Valleys and streams Birds in the trees And lakes that surround me a place I'd feel lose A place I could lose East Tennessee blue A place to forget All my regrets And leave just the good times A place I could feel Nothing but Peace as free as the sunshine. A place I'd feel lose. A place I could lose. These Tennessee blue. If I had my way, I'd leave here today. I'd leave in a hurry. Find me a place where I could stay and not have to worry. A place I'd feel lose. 
a place I could lose these Tennessee blues. Back in the songs, Ricky. Great song. Very melancholy. Will Gary have something melancholy or, or something to cheer us up? And after Gary, we've got Pal. Prepare yourselves. Okay, something fairly melancholy. This is an Irish song. It's a Percy French song. Come back, Paddy Riley. Oh, the garden of Eden has vanished, they say. But I know the lie of it still. Just turn to the left at the bridge of Finney and stop when halfway to Coot Hill. It's there I might find it, I know sure enough, when fortune has come to me call. Oh, the grass, it is green around Valley James Duff, and a blue sky is over it all. And tones that are tender, and tones that are gruff, Come whispering over the sea. Come back, Paddy Riley, to Bally James Duff. Come home, Paddy Riley, to me. My mother once told me that when I was born, the day that I first saw the light. I looked down the street on that very first morn and gave a great crow of delight. Now most newborn babies appear in a huff and start with a sorrowful squall. But I knew I was born in Valley James Duff, and that's why I smiled on them all. The baby's a man now, he's toil worn and tough, still whispers come over the sea. Come back, Paddy Riley, to Valley James Duff. Come home, Paddy Riley, to me. The night that we danced by the light of the moon, with Phil to the fore with his flute, when Phil threw his lip over, come again soon, it had danced the foot out of your boot. The day that I took Long McGee by the scruff for slandering Rosy Kilrain and marching him straight out of Valley James Duff and assisting him into a drain. Now sweet are the dreams as the duty I puff of whispers come over the sea. Come back, Paddy Riley, to Bally James Duff. Come home, Paddy Riley, to me. Now sweet are the dreams as the duty I puff of whispers from over the sea. Come back, Paddy Riley, to Bally James Duff. Come home, Paddy Riley, to me. Thank you. Lovely.
how many songs do you to play some? Well, Gary, um, and I know that you're one of the uh, uh, very early entrants for the Islington Folk Club May Trad to Mad competition, so good luck. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Will there be others? Um, yeah, I'm trying to promote that, actually, so if anybody uh, wants to contribute to that, head over to Islington Folk Club uh, webpage and all the rules are there for Trad to Mad. And you too could win as much as twenty-five pounds. <laughs> Put it here. Yeah. It's true. Anyway, hundred pounds in my day. Inflation <laughs> <laughs> is a big thing. Um, so hard. Oh, it's Paul, and then it's Martin. Oh, Martin Neil, that is. Okay, this is another mining disaster, I'm afraid. Hope it's not going to be a theme for the evening. <clears throat> By Clyde's bonny banks, as I slowly did wander among the pitties, as the evening grew nigh, I spied a young woman all dressed in black mourning weeping and wailing with many a sigh. I stepped up beside her and gently addressed her. Would it help you to talk about the cause of your pain? Weeping and wailing, at last she did answer, Johnny Murphy, kind sir. Is my true lover's name. Twenty-one years of age, full of youth and good looking, to work down the mines of High Blantyre he came. Our wedding was fixed, all the guests were invited, that calm summer's evening. My Johnny was slain. The explosion was heard by the women and children. With pale, anxious faces, they ran to the mine. When the news was made known, all the hills rang with mourning. Two hundred and seven. Scottish miners were slain. Mothers and daughters and sweethearts and lovers, the Blantyre explosion you'll never forget. All you good people who hear my sad story, remember the miners who lie at their rest. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good on, pal. Clapometer does not lie. Martin Neil is next. And after Martin, we'll have Chris Lamb. <laughs> Right, I think I've unmissed, yes, I have unmissed myself. Right, this one I sort of, was a song that's vaguely on my list, but when uh, Dave uh, Harbour did uh, a Second World War song, I thought I would do this, which is another Second World War song, though, unlike the DJ Dodgers, it was a sort of product of the commercial music industry rather than written by soldiers. But they, it was written, it was, Written by um, ah, hmm. Ralph Butler and Noel Gray, who were both, who was, Noel Gray was a particularly famous and popular song, composer of popular songs. We came from here to Lancashire and then to Salisbury Plain And then we went to Somerset and now we're back again We'd like to settle down 
we seem to hope in vain for someone's passed the word along we're on the move again chorus we don't know where we're going till we're there there's lots and lots of rumors in the air we heard the captain say we're on the move today we only hope the bleeding sergeant major knows the way they chased us round and round the barrack square and now we're on the road to anywhere no one's in the know we're singing as we go oh we don't know where we're going till we're there it's not so bad in Somerset where the cider apples grow. It's not so bad in Salisbury Plain with a Mary Jane, you know. It's, it's not, not so bad in Lancashire a couple of weeks a year. But oh, crikey, where do we go from here? And then there's a wonderful descending passion. You go da 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 di da 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 they chased us round and round the barrack square. But now we're on the road to anywhere. No one's in the know, we're singing as we go. Oh, we don't know where we're going till we're there. Yeah, well done, Martin. <laughs> it's an appropriate song for now. None of us knows where we're going till we're there. <laughs> A truer word was never spoken. <laughs> Islam, can you follow that, please? And after Chris, if we could have Jacqueline Hines. Okay, this is a shanty. Um, it's one I've known for years, but I uh, heard other people sing, but I've never learnt it or sung it myself till today. So I'm going to give it a, give it a try. Goodbye, me darling. Goodbye, me dear O. Old Wiley O. Pumalay. Goodbye, me sweetheart. Goodbye, me dear O, old Wiley O, gone away. The anchor is weighed and the rags we've all set. Good old Wiley O, boom away. Them Liverpool Judies we'll never forget. Old Wiley O, gone away. Goodbye, me darling, goodbye, me dear O, old Wiley O, boom -alay. Goodbye, me sweetheart, goodbye, me dear O, old Wiley O, gone away. The rain, it is raining all the day long, go old Wiley O, Boom away. The north northerly winds they blow so strong. Old Wiley O, gone away. Goodbye, me darling. Goodbye, me dear O. Old Wiley O, boom away. Goodbye, me sweetheart. Goodbye, me dear O. Old Wiley O, gone away. Cheer up, Mary Ellen, and don't look so glum. Old Wiley O, boom -alay. On white stopping day, you'll be drinking hot rum. 
Old Riley O, gone away. Goodbye, me darling. Goodbye, me dear O. Old Riley O, boom away. Goodbye, me sweetheart. Goodbye, me dear O. Old Riley O, gone away. We're outward bound for the Bengal Bay. Old Riley O, boom away. Get bending, me lad, it's a hell of a way. Old Riley O, gone away. Goodbye, me darling. Goodbye, me dear O. Old Riley O, boom away. Goodbye, me sweetheart. Goodbye, me dear O. Old Riley O, gone away. Oh, John. <laughs> Thanks very much, Chris. It's good to have songs to join in with, even if nobody else can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jacqueline Hines is next. Uh, the first um, first time at this uh, online session. <laughs> And uh, next on the list after Jacqueline, it's going to be Liz, please. Okay, Jacqueline. Okay. Quite a lot of people don't know, so I should just explain. Uh, okay. Half of Rackerjack. <coughs> You're going to have to unmute yourself, so lift your fingers from the keyboard. Sorry, I was just introducing myself because there's a lot of people I know, but a lot of people I don't know. Hello, Sheila, and hello, Mike. But... Uh, I'm, uh, I work with the racket and I am the least important half of Racker Jack. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, so this is the Dark Eyed Sailor. As I walked out one evening south be in summer to take the air. I spied a female and a sailor boy, and I stood to listen. And I stood to listen to hear what they might say. He said, Fair maid, why do the day it is on, the night is on. She heaved a sigh, and the tears did roll for me, dark eyed sailor. For me, dark eyed sailor, so young and stout and bold. Tis seven long years since he left this land. The ring he took off his lily white hand. One of the ring is still with me, but the others rolling. But the others rolling at the bottom. He said, can't you drive him out of your mind? Another young man you surely will find. Love turned aside and closed his grow like a winter's morning. Like a winter's morning, the hills are white with snow. Then half of the ring did young William show. She ran distracted and grief unknown. Saying, William, oh William, I have gone. Call me dark, I'd say. Call me dark, I'd say. No, the house can hold once more. The 
dinner now because I'm in lockdown with two Italians and they're going to murder me if I don't have my pasta right now because they've been cooking it. I'm coming back. Buon <laughs> appetito. No. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Jacqueline. That was great. Please come back. <laughs> I will. And that was our first piano in these sessions. Fantastic. <laughs> Um, so, uh, next we have Liz, and after that, Wendy. And if there's anyone who's joined us a bit late who is wondering how to get on the singers list, <coughs> click on participants down the bottom, and then there's a raise hand button uh, in the participants list. And if you click on that, you will be added to the participants list, and I'll call you in in due course. Okay, um, where are we? So Liz and then I've got Wendy. <laughs> Liz, are you there? Yes, you hadn't unmuted me. I've just unmuted myself. You should do it yourself, Liz. I'm not doing all the work for you. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, we've had a few war and anti-war songs, and this is in the same vein. So. They told all the fine young men that when this war is over, there will be peace, and the peace will last forever. In Flan oh God, that was dreadful, sorry. <clears throat> In Flan It doesn't feel right, sorry. They, mm, mm, sorry about this. In Flanders, I'm going to give this up. I'm cutting, cutting this. Sorry, it's usually all right. But unless I'll have one more go because it's quite short. I'll start again and then give it up. They told all the fine young men that when this war is over, there will be peace, and the peace will last forever. In Flanders fields, at Lone Pine and Bersheba, for king and country, for honour and duty, the young man cursed and swore and crept and died. They told all the fine young men that when this war is over, in your country's grateful heart, we will cherish you forever. At the brook and all the men, at Boonar and Kokoda, like their fathers before, in a world mad with war, the young man, 
wept and cursed and fought and died for many of these fine young men all the wars are i've lost the tune i'll stop there i'm not not in tune tonight for some reason thank you oh at first yeah. <laughs> it's, it is definitely much harder to to sing out out in your own living room. I'm finding. Yeah. Yeah. It's when quite you're weird. Your it's strange. <laughs> also <laughs> weird uh, with the perfectly well this room afternoon room. in my own living room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was good to hear from you, Liz. Oh, practice. Yeah. That's that's the that's the problem. You shouldn't ever practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Wendy, practiced or not, it's your turn next. And um, following Wendy, we have Angelica. Okay. Um... I haven't practiced much, so I hope that bodes well. <laughs> uh, this is kind of your usual maiden in distress song, really. You know, been done over by some terrible man. It's always my favorite, really. <clears throat> oh, the color of amber is my true love's hair. And his two blue eyes entice at me, and his ruby lips, so soft and so fine. Oh, many's the time they've been pressed to mine. Oh, I will go fishing in yonder brook where I'll catch my love with a line and a hook. And if he loves me like I love him, no man on earth shall part us too. Oh, I wish, oh, I wish, but it's all in vain. Oh, I wish I was a maiden again, but a maiden again. I never shall be till apples grow on an orange tree. Oh, the color of amber is my true love's hair, and his two blue eyes and ties at me and his ruby lips so soft and so fine oh many's the time they've been pressed to mine <clears throat> that's beautiful oh. Great, Wendy. Thank you. Um, we'll have Angelica next, and after Angelica, we'll have Amanda McLean. What? I'm not Daddy. ready. You'll have to go anyway. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> that's this job. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Right. Never in my life have I sung unaccompanied, um, so good luck to you. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, hard is the fortune of all womankind. She is always controlled. She is always confined. Controlled by her parents until she is a wife. A slave to her husband the rest of her life. Oh, I'm just a poor girl, my fortune is sad. I've always been courted by the wagoner's lad. He's courted me daily by night and by day and now he is loading and going away oh my parents don't like him because he is poor they say he's not worthy of entering my door. He works for a living, his money's his own. And if they don't like it, they can leave him alone. Oh, your horses are hungry, go feed them some hay. Then sit down here by me as long as you may. My horses ain't hungry, they won't eat your hay. So fare thee well, darling, I'll be on my way. Oh, your wagon needs greasing, your whip is to mend. Then sit down here by me as long as you can. My wagon is greasy, my whip's in my hand. So fare thee well, darling no longer to stand. Wonderful. Wow. Excellent. <laughs> throw away the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the guitar? Someone said throw away the guitar. Jellica, it's difficult to sing without a guitar to hide behind. <laughs> uh, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well done. Angela. Great song. Thank you. Thank you for making this, <laughs> this session. Whenever you you uh, took that step. Okay, it's now me. I'm going to meet the lot of you. Okay. Um, this is a song by Adam McNaughton. I sing quite a few of his songs. Um, a bit of a bit of a, a a change of change of atmosphere from the last few songs, but kind of suitable for lockdown, really, considering the amount that everybody's eating. I've been taking advice and the best the right things to eat since shortly before I was born. For the national dried milk and the cod liver oil tip powder rhinoceros horn. In the days they tell us to lay off the starches, the sugar, potatoes and breed. Now they've done a U-turn, tell us breeding potatoes will give us the fibre we need. So I've made up my mind that the menus designed by the experts just aren't they for me. The trained dietitian or general practitioner will decide what I have for my tea. Brown breed with a low fat paste thinly spread on, maybe healthier than the meat pie. But who wants to grow the eating St. Ivo gold? I would rather taste butter and die. Cholesterol, cholesterol, my chance of survival is small. 
but I'll no get a dose of anorexia nervosa, cause I love my cholesterol. The thing that has brought this affair to a head is the good-hearted Glasgow campaign. I just said, what's that? And the doc had his needle sucking blood at the handiest vein. Three weeks later, they measured my height and my weight, and they took my blood pressure and all. A computer said, mate, to survive at your weight, you would need to be seven feet tall. But I'm no going to take the suggestions they make about changing the way that I eat. Cutting out cheese and they chips, if you please. They chocolate and they ice cream, they meat. They tell us to give up these goodies below and they promise us pie in the sky. Well, semi skimmed milk might diminish my bulk, but I'll take double cream till I die. Cholesterol, cholesterol. My chance of survival is small. The cream I consume it may lead to my doom, but I love my cholesterol. Well, it's all right for you that smoke 40 a day and spend every night in the bar. You can tell the health visitor you'll cut it out. She'll say, what a fine fellow you are. But when I tell her I'd never smoked in my life and I was teetotal to boot, she says, go away, there is nothing to do. You've no vices that you can cut out. Well, I don't mind them probing in my haemoglobin if it's just for a case history. But it puts a health visitor into a tizzet, her duty to try and save me. She says, fresh fruit and yoghurt's a lovely dessert. Why don't you give it a try? Well, I don't give a hoot for her yoghurt and fruit. I'll have black forest gato and die. Cholesterol, cholesterol. My chance of survival is small. The way that I dine, I'm on course for angina, but I love my cholesterol. Ooh. <laughs> wonderful song, wonderful. I'm up to make it. Such a good writer, it's fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. It's only in, uh, it's it's only in your songs. accent that you can rhyme bulk and milk. This <laughs> 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 is true. I like a dorsa and a dorsa. Fine rhymes in there. Okay, so Sheila is next, and after Sheila, we'll oh, have oh. oh, Too many oh. scots on this. <laughs> Don't forget to unmute yourself, Sheila. Unmute. Um, yes, this is um, a, a version from the States of uh, a British song that started over here, and I learned it from my good friend Lisa Null, who now lives in Silver Spring, as far as I remember, Maryland, um, or thereabouts. Uh, and uh, yes, I'm not. I'm still very out of practice at singing, so I hope my voice will hold up. <coughs> Lady Margaret was sitting in her own lone home. Built of lime and stone, Lady Margaret was sitting in her own lone home when she heard a dead man's moan. Oh, is it my father, Lord Thomas, she said, is it my brother, John? Or is it my true love, sweet William, from Scotland home has come? <coughs> Sorry. It's not your father, Lord Thomas, he said, nor is it your brother, John. But it is your true love, sweet William, from Scotland home has come. Have you brought to me any diamonds or pearls? Have you brought to me any ring? 
Have you brought to me any token at all that a true love ought to bring? I have brought to you no diamonds or pearls. I have not brought any ring. But I brought to you my white winding sheet that my body was buried in. Oh, love, where are your red rosy cheeks that oft times used to bloom? Oh, they all are rotten and they will be forgotten by the love I lost so soon. Excuse me a second. <coughs> He took her by the middle quite hand and bade her company. He took her by the middle so small saying, follow, follow me. She lifted her underskirts one by one, just above her knee. She's gone over the hill on a cold winter's night in a dead man's company. They walked and they talked alone together till the cock began to crow. It's time for the dead and the living to part. Lady Margaret, I must go. Is there any room at your head, she said. Is there any room at your feet? Is there any room all about your sides where I might lie down and sleep? My mother lies at my head, he said. My father is at my feet. And there's three hell hounds all about my sides where I must lie down and sleep. One is for my drunkenness, one is for my pride, and one is for promising a fair pretty maid that she might be my bride. She took a cross all out from her bosom, smote him across the breast, saying, here is a token for you, sweet William, God grant you a happy night's rest. I'm thankful to you, Lady Margaret, he said, I'm thankful unto you. If the dead they are bound to pray for the living, then I'm bound to pray for you. Good night, good night, Lady Margaret, he said. Good night, good night, said he. I hope the very next time we do meet, in heaven we both shall be. Oh, well sung, Peter. Well sung. Thanks to uh, that. Well, that tune really rolls along, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a great tune. It's it's. Yeah. Uh, I really like that version. There are, I mean, there are lots of versions of it, and there are much longer versions. But I, yeah, I like that yeah. one. That's good. Okay, James, and then after James, uh, we'll have Racker, the other half of Racker Jack. All right, I want this an Appalachian song. James. Righty. Um, for those of you not following uh, Nancy Kerr on Twitter, she's currently doing a series of Leon Russelson songs, a Leon Russelson song every day to pass lockdown, which uh, reminded me I know this one. Little Tim Maguire loved to play with fire, always hated water, never used to wash, loved the smell of burning, of bonfires burning, loved to play all day with his little tinder box. He chased the sparks as they flew into the evening, hailed the flash of lightning and the burning sun. 
When I'm a man, I'm going to be a fireman. Then I can light a fire for everyone. When Tim was four, they put him in a uniform, sent him off to school with iron railings all around. Hated the school and the rules and the railings, took his little tinder box and burned it to the ground. Oh, how he laughed and danced in the firelight. Oh, how he danced as the flames leapt to the sky. When I'm a man, I'm going to be a fireman, keep a bonfire burning until the day I die. When Maguire grew older, they made him wear a bowler, sent him off to work in an office in the town, hated the pens and the pins and the papers, had just one ambition, to burn the office down. Oh, Tim Maguire loved to play with fire, loved the blaze of roses and the golden grain, loved the leaves of autumn, the red leaves of autumn, loved a slender girl with a smile like a flame. The judge said at his trial, your behaviour has been vile. You're a menace to society, though you may think you're big. You'll have to go to prison. But then what a commotion, because smoke and fire were pouring from out the judge's wig. Oh, how he laughed and danced in the courtroom. They took him down and locked him in the darkness of a cell. Never saw the sun or heard the songbirds calling. Saw the prison bars, heard the prison bell. Then early one morning, just as the day was dawning, a great wheel of fire spun skywards from the jail. The stone walls crumbled, the iron bars melted. No one in the prison lived to tell the tale. No one ever found Tim Maguire's little tinderbox. No one ever found a trace of Tim Maguire. Perhaps he's up in heaven, setting light to angels' halos. Perhaps he's down in hell, dancing round the fire. Oh, Tim Maguire loved to play with fire. Loved the blaze of roses and the golden grain. Loved the leaves of autumn, the red leaves of autumn. Loved the slender girl with a smile like a flame. Oh, Tim Maguire loved to play with fire. Loved the blaze of roses and the golden grain. Loved the leaves of autumn, the red leaves of autumn. Loved the slender girl with a smile like a flame. <laughs> Good. Oh, lovely! And miracles and songs, well sung. That's yeah. Good stuff, James. Thank you, Racker. You're up next, and after Racker, Racker, we've got Maggie and or Pete. <laughs> Don't forget to unmute yourself. I, I had unmuted myself and somebody very thoughtfully muted me. That, that would have been me. It might have been. It might have been. But all with the best intentions, I am sure. Uh, as I'm sure Chaucer had when he wrote um, The Reeves' Tale. Uh, but it's very hostile towards Millers. Uh, sorry about that, Sheila. And also sorry about Sheila for its um, chauvinistic values, which are by no means mine. So anything wrong with this, please blame Geoffrey Chaucer. Uh, and anything good and of high quality, I'll modestly accept the compliments for. Anyway, here it is called Taking the Cake. It's a story rhyme. It's more a story than a rhyme. Once a Miller had a blade sharp as any ever made, snug in his pouch, a nifty knife, none dared approach him fearful for their life. A thief he was as well, of corn and meal, malicious, avaricious, born to steal. So, to add conservativity to his life, he took a clergyman's daughter as his wife. Oh, with what dignity, the pair processed, and he possessed her like a man possessed. They fiddled and diddled their way to plenty. Now they've a daughter, Rosie, plump and twenty, broad in the beam, breasts both round and high, cascade of tumbling hair, I tell no lie, with just one cradled brother and no other. When they fiddled and diddled at Cambridge College, 
though it couldn't be proved, it was common knowledge. Two Bible students, after cogitation, decided to resolve the situation. Two heroes on one horse, crusading clerks, a gog for justice and a gag for larks, cantered to the mill one merry morning with for grinding a sack of college corn. Said Geordie John to Baldy Miller, Put it careful now, divin spiller. Yorkshire Arms stood some way off, counting each grain into the trough. Miller thought, I'll foil their studious plan. The greatest scholar is never the wisest man. When all the grain was in, he sidled out into the yard behind and looked about, spotted their horse, untied the bridle, then smack on the stallion's rump, off with you to the fen, the horse away, a whinnying wee hee hee, I'm off to catch the wild mares running free. Miller sidled back without a word to say, just sucked a straw, or maybe it was hay. The students, once the corn was ground, came out with their sack of flour and found the absence of their horse. He's gone and gone, I'd help come quick. Whoever, shouted John. They dropped the bag and ran to catch their nag. Miller thought, oh, here's my swag. Them scholars, I gave them, I gave them a terrible fright. A good third of the flour he took and gave to daughter and wife to cook. Or are them scholars? Ain't they had a fright? I plucked them and I cannot read nor write. That horse of theirs, he scrammed away so fast. The frantic pair, they snared the beast at last. But now it's night. The lads beg board and bed. Well, here's some mouldy bread. We've just one room. We'll share it then. The room is small, but you being learned men, by jigonometry can make that room what's ten foot wide, as wide as Pharaoh's tomb. Across from parents up there on a shelf, fair Rosie has a bed all to herself. Her parents drank a pail of ale, the best. Midnight or thereabouts they came to rest. Though Ma had drunk her quota from the, cra from the ladle, by the parental bed she planted firm the cradle. Pa snorted like a cart horse in his sleep, and farted like a dragon long and deep. Ma joined in the chorus, hot and strong. Half a mile off, you'd hear that old sweet song. Alan gave John a nudge. Are you awake? How can you doze? It's like a chuffing earthquake. I tell thee, John, as sure as I'm a man, I mean to broach their daughter if I can. For there's a Bible precept. If aggrieved, it's by the family you should be relieved. Said John, the miller's a wolf a man for slaughter. If he should wake and catch her with his daughter, <sharp inhale> Alan arose towards the lass he crept. Rosie in her cosy bed half slept, and when she felt him, he was near so nigh, she'd hardly time to yield one happy sigh. So let them play, and soon let's turn to John, but that's enough for now. End of Act One. Jeanette. <laughs> Mighty stuff, Rakar. Mighty. Yes. Great stuff. So there's an act two, is there? <laughs> so um, we, I, I think we're going to have to finish the first half with Maggie and Pete, and then we'll have a break and come back. We're about 17 people still on the list who haven't sung yet, so I think it's fair enough to say that uh, we do need a break now and not after everybody has sung. Um, so, yeah, uh, Maggie and Pete, it's over to you. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Thank you.
right now. We were singing this a lot around the time of the election. I was feeling optimistic, but yeah. Uh, yeah, you ready? That was just me. That's you. Um, and, and, uh, nope, yeah. hang on. Uh, Hail the day so long expected, hail the year of full release. Zion falls on our erected, and her watchmen publish peace. Through our Shiloh's wide dominion, hear the trumpet loudly roar. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. All her merchants stand with wonder. What is this that comes to pass? Murmuring like the distant thunder, crying, Oh, alas, alas. So well the sound, ye kings and nobles, priests and people, rich and poor. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. Hark and hear the people crying. See the city disappears. Trade and traffic all are dying. Lo, they sink to rise no more. Merchants who have bought her traffic crying from a distant shore. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. Blow the trumpet in Mount Zion. Christ shall come the second time, ruling with a rod of iron. All who now as foes combine, Babel's garments we've rejected, and our fellowship is poor. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. <laughs> Good one to end the first half on. Thanks. Um, before we break, I'm just going to um, switch, the, pause the recording to be Richard. Richard followed by David Jones. So Richard, please take us away into the second half. I think I'm unmuted. I thought I'd give you a tune. Uh, and I have, I'm consuming, I'm consuming some Swedish liquor, not, not, not Akovit, actual Swedish malt whiskey. So there. To go with the Swedish tune. One of the bride marches. Thank you. 
Continuing the great sharps tradition of Swedish. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, David, what do you have for us? And Anne, you'll be after David. I've got. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what? That's <laughs> good. It's just me, says you, David. You'll need to unmute yourself. Unmute. There we go. Yeah. Unmuted. Um, these are some words put together by Gina Dunlap, who you might, many of you might know over there. And she said it to the tune, a very famous tune, How Can I Keep From Singing? Um, Life Goes On in Endless Song and so on. This is called When Fortune Guides a Sailor. <clears throat> We're bound away upon the tide to leave our friends behind us all anchor chains and slip away to break the ties that bind us fast on the breeze to the northern seas what fortunes guide a sailor to earn a share of the oil and bone. Tis a hard life for a whaler. Through many dangers unforeseen and bitter storms to try us, cold icy winds and towering waves the faintest star to guide us when darkening skies around us close neath greenland's cliffs forsaken ten thousand miles away from home and hearts are nearly breaking And when at last we hear the cry And all in wild commotion The cutting blast and down she dives In that dreary troubled ocean And when that whale has breathed her last and seabirds left to grieve her will hoist the sails and steer for home and it's leave her johnny leave her leave her johnny leave her Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we have, we've had David, we've now got Anne, and after Anne, we've got Alison. So there's, there's, we've hit a sweet spot. Sweet spot. <laughs> <laughs> and what have you got for us? Are you struggling with the mute button? I, I'll, I'm going to try and unmute you. 
I say, Thank I've you, you've done it. Know. That's great. That's there was an icon covering the microphone. I couldn't get rid of it. Sorry. Doesn't help. Okay. The, um, yeah, this has a chorus. Please join in. Down the banks of the sweet primroses, Johnny and Molly, they sat reposing. While all around the drums were beating, march on lads, there's no retreating. Love, farewell, darling, farewell. We're all for marching, love, farewell. I think I hear the colonel crying, Come on, lads, there's no denying. When cannons roar and guns do rattle, march on, lads, we're bound for the battle. Love, farewell, darling, farewell. We're all for marching, love, farewell. The captain cries, all lads be ready, every man both firm and steady, every man both light and sober, every man with his gun and his powder, love farewell, darling farewell, we're all for marching, Love farewell. Now, Johnny dear, oh, please don't leave me, for if you do, it will surely grieve me. And if you go where the cannons rattle, I fear, my love, you'll die in the battle. Love farewell. Darling, farewell, we're all for marching, love, farewell. A curse be on these cruel wars, and that they ever did arise. For they've taken me true, love, far, far from me. And many's the other men likewise. Love, farewell, darling, farewell. We're all for marching, love, farewell. Love, farewell. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely Anne. Alison, you're up next, followed by Bob. We've had a couple of songs tonight um, about mining, um, and this is a song about a pit pony. And um, I've been doing a bit of a clear out and when I was at college doing integrated arts I had to do a project and I, I found, my friend and I found a bunch of miners at Kids Grove Working Men's Club in the Potteries who'd moved from County Durham to Staffordshire in the 40s and 50s um, when the mines up there were closing and they needed miners down in the, the slightly further south. Um, and so we did a project based on this, and this is one of the songs. It was actually written by Roger Watson, and it's called Juliver. Oh, gather round you gather lads, wherever you may be. And rest yourselves a little while, and listen unto me. I'll tell to you a story. And every word is true of oh, Juliver, the finest horse a ganger ever knew. I started driving ponies first when 
I were twelve year old. I drove a horse called Juliver, and he were as good as gold. He never bit and he never kicked at me nor anyone. And when it come to work, I swear he'd pull a thousand ton. We used to work a rising road in the tops, they ran down free. The time I fell in front of them, I thought it had finished me. I thought me day had come, me lads, I'm telling you no lie. It was no use to shout for help, there was nobody else nearby. Well, I reckoned without you, liver, as I stumbled down that road. He knew he couldn't have stopped them tops, it were far too great a load. Well, I felt his head come into me back and his nose go into me thigh. And he pushed me into an empty stall as the tops went rolling by. <coughs> The first thing that I told the lads when they came to look for me If it hadn't have been for Juliver I'd have met me Jubilee It shows that kindness pays, you know, I'm sure I'm right to claim If I'd been cruel to Juliver he'd never have done the same so let's fill up your glasses, I and drink a health around. To every man and every oss as works beneath the ground. We'll drink to better treatment, lads, of ponies by their men. And let's remember Juliver and pass them round again. Lovely. Lovely stuff. I haven't heard that for a long time. <coughs> That's fun, Alison. Probably Rod, you were heard seeing it last year. <laughs> uh, great stuff, Alison. Thank you. Next singer is Bob Askew, who hasn't uh, been to Sharps for two months at least, but um, he's finally joined us. And after Bob, could we have Jan, please? So unmute yourself. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, good to see, great to see you all. Sorry I've been away so long. I was lucky enough to be down in Hampshire when all this started, so the sunny Hampshire. Um, uh, sorry, I've got a bit of a headache, so I might leave half an hour early. I apologise for that. I want to do uh, Captain Cried All Hands, which is from a singer called George Smith, just up the road here in Fareham, a hundred years ago. And uh, Captain Cried All Hands is often uh, mixed up with the blacksmith, but I think they work much better as separate songs. So we'll continue the theme of uh, the military going away to war. A captain cried all hands and away tomorrow, leaving my dearest dear in grief and sorrow. Dry up your briny tears and leave off weeping, for happy we shall be at our next meeting. What makes you go away fighting for strangers when you could stay at home free from all dangers? I'd hold you in my arms, my dearest jewel. So stay at home with me. And don't be cruel. When I had gold in store, you did invite me. Now I'm low and poor, you means to slide me. You courted me a while, 
just to deceive me. Now my heart you have gained, you means to leave me. She fell down on the ground like one was dying. Spread her arms abroad, sighing and crying. Saying there's no believing men, no, not my own brother. So girls, if you must love, love one another. Farewell, my dearest dear, father and mother. I am your only one, you have no other. But it's vain to wait for me, for I am going to everlasting joy with fountains flowing. Mm. Oh. One, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Hampshire man is back in town. What's that, Tom? Hampshire and boy is back. I love it. <laughs> yes, and I'm down in Hampshire now. Welcome to the COVID 19. You know, that was lucky to be down here. Very. Oh, where was he singing then? Next singer is Jan, and after Jan, we'll have Kat. I think I've unmuted, have I? You have indeed. Oh, thanks. I find it, I'm sorry, because I'm visually disabled, I find it really, really difficult to find where the right buttons are. So I apologise. And this is from leftover from last week when it was a May Day song. It's Mike O'Connor singing in the May. I don't think I did it here. But if I did, well, sorry. <laughs> the street was hushed, the listening stars were bright the church clock chimed at 12 o'clock midnight and as its echoes died voices at my side in unison replied unite unite singing in the may singing in the may in unison replied unite unite I heard familiar voices in the crowd, soft but clear, this song they sang aloud. From many miles away, old friends seemed to say, let all upon this day unite, unite. Singing in the May, singing in the May, let all upon this day Unite, unite. Then voices we had thought to hear no more. From generations that had gone before. With us all seemed to sing. Their words re-echoing. As summer follows spring. Unite, unite. Singing in the May. Singing in the May, as summer follows spring, unite, unite. And from the narrow streets came this reply, across the harbour to the starlit sky. As children yet unborn sang in the new May morn to welcome summer's dawn. Unite, unite, singing in the May, singing in the May, to welcome summer's dawn. Unite, unite, above the town the rising voices cried, that all should be as one, whatever betide. For winter time has gone, the wheel of life rolls on. 
Summer is a come, unite, unite. Singing in the May, singing in the May. Summer is a come, unite, unite. Oh, let's do it again. Singing in the May, singing in the May. Summer is a come, unite, unite. Thank you. Yeah. Song. I like that song. Yeah, I do. Back. Thanks, John, and welcome oh. back, Mac. <laughs> I thought you'd gone forever, but you're I not. Don't know what I did, Amanda. I don't know what I did. <laughs> Beyond me. Mad in this life. <laughs> Never mind, you made it back from the wilderness. Thank you. Okay, who's next? Um, Kathy and then Jean W. Oh, there's Kathy. 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 Okay. Um, another song that features May. As I walked out one May morning. To view the fields and the leaves are springing I spied two maidens standing by And one of them her hands was wringing Oh dear oh, oh dear oh May husband's got no courage in him Oh dear oh My husband's admired wherever he goes and everyone looks well upon him with his handsome features and well-shaped leg but nothing will put courage in him oh dear oh oh dear oh my husband's got no courage in him oh dear oh my husband he can caper and sing and do anything that's fitting for him but he cannot do the thing i want because he has no courage in him oh dear oh oh dear oh my husband has no courage in him oh dear oh all sorts of fiddles I do provide All sorts of meat that's fitting for him With oyster pie and rhubarb too But nothing will put courage in him Oh dear oh, oh dear oh My husband's got no courage in him Oh dear oh it's every night we go to bed I lie and I throw my leg right o'er him And me hand I clap between his thighs But I can't put any courage in him Oh dear oh, oh dear oh My husband's got no courage in him Oh dear oh well, it's seven long years I've made his bed And every night I've lain beside him But this morning I woke with my maiden head For still he has no courage in him Oh dear oh, oh dear oh My husband has no courage in him Oh dear oh well, I wish me husband he was dead In his grave I'd quickly bury him And then I'd take another one That's got a bit of courage in him Oh dear oh, oh dear oh My husband's got no courage in him Oh dear oh Uh, hey, well Aimless done. bugger. Aimless. Yeah, you wouldn't know if Jeff was here. 
Safely in another room. <laughs> yeah, I had one of them. We'll tell it. <laughs> Heartfelt, Carthy. I'm not going to ask yeah, if you're well. biographical. Uh, <laughs> With my first husband, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Much information. Much information. <laughs> on, okay. <laughs> Gina, you you're ready. And after Jean, could we have Simon, please? I asked Simon. There's several different versions of this one, but this was one that I heard with uh, Sarah Morgan. Overseas in Flanders, the sun was dropping low. With tramp and creak and jingle, I heard the gun teams go. And something seemed to set me a dreaming. As I lay of my old Hampshire village at the quiet end of day, and his home lies home all among the corn and clover. Home lies home when the working day is over. For there's rest for horse and man when the longest day is done, and they'll all go home together at the setting of the sun. Brown thatch with gardens blooming, with lily and with rose, and the river them so quiet where it flows white fields of oats and barley and the odor flies like foam and the sky all gold with sunset and the horses going home and his home as home all among the corn and clover, home lies home when the working day is over. For there's rest for horse and man when the longest day is done, and they'll all go home together. At the setting of the sun, dead lies and shadowy horses. I see them still the same. I see them and I know them, and I call them each by name. Riding down from harvest. When all the wests are glow and the lads are sitting sideways and singing as they go, and his home lies home with the sunset on their faces, home lies home. To the quiet, happy places For there's rest for horse and man When the longest day is done And they'll all go home together At the setting of the sun And his home lies home all among the corn and clover, home lies home when the working day is over. For there's rest for horse and man when the longest day is done, and they'll all go home together. 
at the setting of the sun. Lovely song. John White's back. <laughs> You're away. Here he is. Hi, Declan. Next. Hi, <laughs> Declan. Yay! <laughs> Is it me? It says you, Simon, yes. Um, I did a song, a Dylan take on the parting glass a couple of weeks ago, which was, a, I think, a beautiful song. Um, just as beautiful, probably not quite as beautiful as the original. Um, this is the original that he got it from, um, which says what Dylan said in five verses, this says in three, and it, somewhat more elegantly put, but... Uh, it's still, um, it's probably a somewhat arrogant song by somebody who's about to leave. Very popular in Ireland, I think. think it's Irish because the voice squad sang it but it's, it's not Scottish and it was also yeah it was also the voice squad that changed it to joy be to you all whereas the original is with you know but it's hugely popular in Ireland which is why I thought it was oh I know yeah but it's not not originally Irish the voice squad yeah Voice Squad, yeah, it's a fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful group. A long, long, long time before the Voice Squad came. Yeah. 
I think they popularised it though. It was after that that lots of people well, started. In my, to sing. Era, in my era, the Dubliners coffee was. Yeah. I do yeah. this. If they are. Clancy in the States. I think that's where Dylan got it. Dylan got it from the Clancy brothers. Clancy yeah. brothers. Got from, yeah. Dylan got it from Liam Clancy, who taught him to play guitar. All right. I thought he learned it when he lived in London. No. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, and, and, uh, Louis Killen taught Liam Clancy how to play concertina. <laughs> we should have a quiz night. Yeah. Let's do that instead. Okay. Uh, that is true. Have a quiz night next week. All right. Okay. No problem. But somebody else is going to have to write it. So I know, like, Sheila, Martin, and Richard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there. No, we'll do that. Really. Come on. Okay. Um, that uh, is that's a, uh, the parting glass is a, so is a song that's often the last song of the evening, but we've actually got a few singers still to go, quite a few singers still to go. Our next one is Declan, and after Declan, yeah. hey, hey. Hey. Declan, you'll need to unmute yourself. Can you, yes. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, that's you now. Okay, it went off again on me. Yeah, in in our singers club here, um, there's a guy who sings the parting glass, and uh, I sing a song, um, the last menstrual show. So there's always a battle between who's going to sing the last song. I was going to sing the last menstrual show tonight, but I'm not going to do it because. Uh, You've had a few war war, war songs and anti-war songs earlier on. And um, we don't have wars in Ireland, we just have troubles. Uh, There's a song that came out of the Troubles in Northern Ireland, written by my good friend Sean Maughan. In a bar stool in Belfast, singing in two pint glass. Jack Campbell's in full blast as last orders are called. His bar stools a mustang. He sways as he by sang of gunfire that once rang from the OK Corral. Now his woman, Nita, he called Rosalita and dreamed of senoritas when drink hit his head. She who whispers, hey, Jose, let's you and me mosey where we can be cozy. In our when the sun goes behind the black mountain, great demons come out to dance, and the cowboys who sing songs of gunfights and engines against submachine guns. They haven't a chance. As homeward they amble, Rosalita and Jack Campbell stopped at the panhandle as food take away. They danced around the chippy. Saying yippee, yippee, and the boys in the queue answered yippee. I now, a slow car was cruising, his victim a choosing. Jack gazed in confusion when he saw the gun. His last word was Jesus, as the trigger was squeezed, 
Jack's on his knees and the slow car is gone. When the sun went behind the black mountain, the demons, they came out to dance. And the cowboys sang songs of gunfights and engines against that submachine gun. Sure he hadn't a chance. Now the years have passed over and behind closed doors he just sinks lower into Prozac and gin. Her nights and her days are all spent in a haze down that old dusty trail where good times have been. Once again, she's Rosalita, a dark senorita, and waiting to greet her, Jack Campbell, her man. He who whispers, come on, Let's ride into the sunset for heaven's just one step from the old Rio Grande. And away, way beyond the Black Mountain, Rosalita and Jack Campbell dance. Where the troubles and all sound forgotten and long gone, and dreamers still hold on to love and romance. Yes, away, way beyond the Black Mountain, Rosalita and Jack Campbell dance. Where the troubles and all sound forgotten and long gone, and dreamers still hold on to love and romance. Yeah. Great. So. Yeah. Come on, Declan. Well done, Declan. Lovely. Say hello to you, David. Song <laughs> Proper tragedy. <laughs> Dave. Dave, Brilliant. Dave followed by Gemma. Dave, sorry, Dave Clear. Oh, right. Uh, so <laughs> I, I'm st you've got to stay alert, you know, stay alert for all these Dave. <laughs> 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 yes, I'm there. Off you go, Dave. Although you might want to unmute yourself first. Right. Um, sorry about that. I was a bit caught unawares there. Um, I'm under a bit of pressure here because Cassie's joined, my daughter, and she and my, um, she and my son have just bought me a microphone and a super-duper laptop as an early birthday present. So I'm gonna to have to. I'm gonna to have to do. It. Sorry about this. You're the guinea pigs. Uh, th this um, this song. Um, it, it's a fiddle tune, an American fiddle tune, written by a guy called um, uh, Rodney Miller, who's a fiddler and fiddle maker. And I first heard it on Carol Anderson's lovely um, album, um, Single Track Road. Uh, but, I, it, but it just it didn't have words. But as now, well, sort of. Feel free to waltz. It was there, Blue Ring and Fair, I first saw her. Surprise to 
pickles and pies at the contents. He smiled and said I'd make a fine bride. And it's true, I guess you knew you'd made a complex. Your daughter up to sing, Dave. Sorry, you should. Uh, you've got to listen to Carol playing the tune, though. It's absolutely <laughs> wonderful. We'll do it together. Yeah, good song. Okay, another newcomer to uh, the virtual sharps um, is Gemma. Gemma, welcome. Hey. Um, oh, Gemma. After Gemma. After Gemma, we'll have Margaret. Margaret Morahan. <laughs> Hey, don't forget to unmute yourself, Gemma. There. Oh, it's so nice to see you all. Uh, <laughs> right, I'll, I'll sing a, I'll sing one that I learnt from the singing of Harry Cox. As I strolled out one morning down by a running stream the water lilies growing it was a charming scene and as i was a walking a damsel i spied 
She was gathering watercresses down by the streamlet side, and her it hung in tresses down by the stream that led to the mill. She was gathering watercresses, my little watercress girl. I asked her, I'm not lonely. She answered with a smile, kind sir. my daily toil. I have to rise up early, my cresses for to sell. She said that her name it was Martha, known as the watercress girl, and her hair it hung in tresses down by the stream that led to the mill. She was gathering watercresses, my own little watercress girl. The day it is not distant, when Martha will be mine, the morning of our wedding, it shall be nice and Dress up like an earl to go and marry Martha, my little watercress girl, and her hair it hung in tresses down by the stream that led to the mill. She was gathering watercresses, my little watercress girl. We have time strong together down by the I married Martha, she has become my queen. Although she's poor, she's proved to be a very useful pal. Oh, a right good wife is Martha, my little watercress girl, and her hair it hung in tresses down by the stream that led to the mill. She was gathering watercresses, my own little watercress girl. Hey, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's one of my favourite songs.
I don't normally sing it, but it's one that always gets sung in the sort of Norfolk singer rounds. And oh. I found I was singing it at home, so I was like, I'm really missing mm. hearing it. So I thought I better sing it then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Moira and Dave, I'm ignoring you, I'm afraid, because uh, we've got enough first time singers now to take us up to uh, 11. That's what I didn't know, me as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind, I'm going to lower your hand, and instead uh, we've got Margaret next, and after Margaret, so we're. Hi, Margaret! Have... Everybody who's ignoring Harbour, put your hand up. <laughs> 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 Margaret, are you there? You're still muted. Arthur, Margaret. Try again. Now we have it. Ah, there we are. Okay. Okay. I, so I just want to say hello to Cassie. I saw her popping her head in there a while ago. <laughs> um. I'm going to sing the May Morning Dew. I hope nobody has sung it already. How pleasant in winter to sit by the hob, listening to the barks and the howls of a dog, or in summer to wander the wide valleys through and to pick the wild flowers in the May morning dew. The summer is coming, the summer is here. With the leaves on the trees and the sky blue and clear, the birds they are singing their fond notes so true, and the flowers they are springing in the May morning dew. The house that I was reared in is but a stone on a stone. And all round the garden the weeds they have grown. And all the kind neighbours that ever I knew. Like the red rose they've withered in the May morning dew. God be with the old folk who are now dead and gone. And likewise my brothers, Dennis and John. As they trip through the heather, the wild hare to pursue. With their dreams they are mingled in the May morning June. Lovely. Cracking song, Margaret. Thank you. Yeah, Neil, you've got to follow Thank that. You. Um, and right. after Neil, we'll have Cassie, please. <laughs> okay, one, well, there is at least one silver lining to all this lockdown business, and that's with, with the reduced traffic in London, you can actually hear the birds. It's wonderful. So I set about learning a song I wanted to learn before. The Birds in the Spring. This one's the... Um, the Surrey version, as collected by Lucy Broadway. <clears throat> On morning in May, by chance I did rove 
And I sat myself down by the side of a grove. And there did I hear the sweet nightingale sing. I never heard so sweet. I never heard so sweet. I never heard so sweet as the birds in the spring. All on the green grass I sat myself down, where the voice of the nightingale echoed around. Don't you hear how she warbles her notes, I declare? No music, no songster, no music, no songster. No music, no songster, but with her compare. Of all your young men, how have you drawn near? I pray you now heed me these words for to hear. But when you grow old, you may have it to sing. That you never heard so sweet, you never heard so sweet, you never heard so sweet as the nightingale sing. That when you grow old, you may have it to sing. That you never heard so sweet, you never heard so sweet. You never heard so sweet as the birds in the spring. It's a nice version. I've only ever heard Bob Coppers before. Okay, thank you, Neil, for that. Cassie is our next singer, and after Cassie, we'll have Viv. Oh. Cassie, don't forget to unmute yourself. Hello. I got it. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. So you'll have to forgive me. Today, I made some pasta. I had three bowls, and I accidentally fell asleep on the sofa until quarter to ten. So <laughs> I woke up like, where am I? And um, I thought, what will I sing? And this song was in my head when I woke up. And then Margaret made me remember being a young child in Tabakari when I used to fall asleep listening to the music and people would put their coats over me as my, as my blanket. And then I started to cry. So here we go with this song. Good luck. <laughs> um. Once I had a secret love who lived within the heart of me all too soon my secret love became impatient to be free so I told the friendly star the way the dreamers always do, just how wonderful you are and why. I'm so in love with you. And now I shout it from the highest hill. Even told the golden daffodils that at last my heart's an open door and my secret love's no secret 
Oh, Cassie, that was way better than Doris Day. Who is she? <laughs> <laughs> she did get the first. I compliment you can pay to a musical theatre lady. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. I wake up on time. So, um, nearly our, our last performer of the evening is Viv Stewart, who is not just a newcomer to uh, Sharps in isolation, but to Sharps altogether. After Viv, we'll have Racker, but in the meantime, big hand to welcome Viv. Don't forget to unmute yourself, Viv. Hi, everyone. So I'm not quite sure how I can follow that. That was absolutely beautiful. Um, this is very different, actually. Uh, maybe not something for this late at night normally, but it hopefully will be a bit rousing in these strange times. So Gerard Wynne Stanley um, led a group of Protestant ra radicals um, who believed in economic equality. And um, he created a movement called the True Levellers in 1649. They became known as the Diggers because they... Um, were attempting to farm on communal land and um, he um, wrote a very rousing poem with lots of verses and I promise not to sing them all um, but uh, the the diggers actually made a stand on St George's Hill near Weybridge in Surrey um, and this is um, the song that uh, George Wynne Stanley wrote or the poem um, so so here we go let's give it a go you noble diggers all, stand up now, stand up now. You noble diggers all, stand up now. The wasteland to maintain. Sorry, I've gone too high. No. You know, <clears throat> you noble diggers all, stand up now, stand up now. You noble diggers all stand up now. Your wasteland to maintain singing cavaliers by name. Your digging does disdain and persons all defame. Stand up now, diggers all. Your houses they pull down. Stand up now, stand up now. Your houses they pull down, stand up now. Your houses they pull down to frighten men in town. But the gentry must come down and the poor shall wear the crown. Stand up now, diggers all. The gentry are all round, stand up now, oh, stand up now. The gentry are all round. Stand up now. The gentry are all round. On each side they are found. Their wisdom so profound. To cheaters of our ground. Stand up now, diggers all. The clergy they come in. Stand up now, stand up now. The clergy they come in. Stand up now. The clergy they come in and say it is a sin that we should now begin our freedom for to win. Stand up now, diggers all. To conquer them by love, come in now, come in now. To conquer them by love, come in now. To conquer them by love. It does you behold, for he is king above. No power is like the love, glory here, diggers all. Yeah, put it to music. Was Leon, yeah. 
Neon. Sorry? Oh, for sure. Leon Russell's and put that to music. To, to music. That's yeah. right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank what? you, Viv. We like rousing. We like rousing at any <laughs> time of day. <laughs> Not conducive to uh, a nice Not calming <laughs> wind down to sleep, though. So sorry about Fantastic that. harmonies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, finally. Um, and uh, in order to complete um, the, uh, uh, the story that was begun earlier this evening, we have Racker Donnelly to close the thing. So, Where is Racker, it? Please, uh, we've all been in suspense. We said the other day was to you. It's not all of us. Some of us know the story already. Oh. oh. It's closer after all. You're ruining it, Sheila. You're ruining it for me. <laughs> Are you there? Racker Donnelly, calling Racker Donnelly. Ooh. Has he? You're, still, you're on mute, you're muted, Racker. Mute. Unmute. Do it again. I can't even see him to try and unmute him. Okay. Ah, there you are. He's unmuted. Okay. You've unmuted me, have you? No, but if someone has, you must have unmuted yourself. So you're good to go now. It's saying mute. Anyway, you can hear me. Yeah, I'm sorry to waste your time at this time of night when we should all be in bed like the young lads. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me? Yes. So everybody else can hear me as well. Yes. Martin, yes. hear me. Martin Nail, raise a hand if you can hear me. He has no hand to raise. Sheila, Sheila's raising two hands. Right, so here we go. I'm getting nothing, what a chance to miss. I shall be made a monkey of in this. John crawls towards the cradle, lifts it, shifts it to buy the student's bed upon the floor. The miller's wife, Soon after stops her snore, needing a pee, she leaves the room, but on return rotates in baffled gloom, missing the cradle John has whipped away. My stars, she gulps. Hmm. I almost went astray and fell into the student's bed. Oh, awful. There could have been beastly doings, quite unlawful. She finds a bed, not doubting that, that she's right, for the cradle lodges by her every night, but of course, of course. It being so dark, the miller's wife slips in with John, the clerk, and snuggles in and settles down to sleep. John braced himself, then with a graceful leap, embarked upon the grateful, fateful wife. It was the greatest shag in all her life. Said Alan to Rosie, I cannot linger here, for me to linger, Rosie, would be my death, my dear. When you are riding homeward, past the mill, from the window sill, you cannot miss it. Take the cake, enjoy it, kiss it. That cake was plundered from the meal you brought to grind, and I had father steal, oh dearest love. God keep you in his keeping, and with that said, she almost fell to weeping. Alan thought, dawn coming on, I'd best get back and pop in beside John, but found the cradle in his way. Ooh, heck, I nearly went astray, then reached the bed in which the miller lay. But thinking it was John inside the bed, he hopped in by the miller's side instead. Three times tonight, from midnight into morn, the miller's daughters help me grind me corn. While you've been snoozing in your dozy way, you basket, cried the miller. What you say? You beast, you pile of offal, dirty rat, by testicles I'll murder you for that. And clutches Alan by his Adam's apple. Alan repays the greeting with a grapple, makes a fist and pokes him up the nose. Down the miller's chest a ruddy river flows. 
up and down and up again they go until the miller slips and stubs his toe, stumbles and tumbles arseways on the wife who hasn't the faintest inkling of the strife. She in a super stupor by John the Clark after their blissful trysting in the dark. But the plummeting rump soon jumps her out of sleep. Help, help, she roars. Oh, Saint Salome, keep me safe. Grabs a club and by a chink of light which peeps in through the roof. The moon is bright, although the room is almost black as pitch. Can see two gladiators, but can't tell who is which till a pale patch shimmers in the dark, a scholar's collar, mark of every clerk. She sneaks up like an altruistic shark to save her mate, the hateful patriarch. But meaning to whack a scholar, it's her fate to smack old Baldy Miller's shining pate. Down goes the scoundrel crying, oh Lord, I'm dying. They clobber him, the clerks, and leave the liar lying. Passing the window sill, they take the cake, made of the flour the wife was told to bake, left her fulfilled. Ditto the daughter. Look, that comes of being a miller and a crook. I heard this proverb when I was a kid. Do evil, you'll be done by as you did. Spankers will get a spanking, so say I. And may God who sits in majesty on high bring all here present to everlasting glory. Even the miller, when he hears our story of lifted crake, cake and shifted cradle and all the fun of males and females spun from a yarn by a peevish reeve in the Canterbury Tales. Thank you, Mr. Chaucer. Well, thank you all. What a great way to end the evening. Another brilliant evening at Sharps in Isolation. The bar is shut. It shut some time ago. <laughs> get better all day. Who's moving the furniture? Yeah. Amanda, thank Amanda. you very much for a great thank evening. Yes. Thank you, Amanda. Amanda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. 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 Bye. 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 Bye.